Hello everyone, welcome to EuroPCR 2025. Uh, I'm Vijay Kunardian, Professor of Interventional Cardiology based in Newcastle, United Kingdom. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Professor Javier Escanet uh, from Madrid, Spain. And uh, today we are going to talk about implementation uh, of um, the diagnosis of ENOCA, which stands for ischemia with non-obstructive coronary arteries in daily practice. Um, so, of course, I had the pleasure to work on the um, 2024 Chronic Coronary Syndrome Guidelines. I led on the chapter for ANOCA and ANOCA, and together with Professor Eskened, we led on the EAPCI consensus document, which really raised the awareness of the ANOCA and ANOCA condition worldwide. Uh, not only raising awareness, but also a number of research studies have been stimulated as a, res uh, uh, as a result. Uh, but still, I would be open and honest, I'm still frustrated that the diagnosis of patients with ENOCA and ANOCA is not as best as we want it to be. So in the guidelines, we have raised the recommendation to 1B for invasive evaluation, so we ensure we reach the appropriate diagnosis. Uh, and it is still not happening. So Professor Askinen, tell us why is ENOCA and ANOCA so important? and why do we need to implement appropriate diagnostic algorithm in the cath lab? Thank you, Vijay. It's very, very important considerations what you make. And before answering your question, I will make the point that probably the reason because we see this uh, lack in adoption is because we are still are living uh, in the context of a paradigm of stenosis center ischemia. Uh, and this is something that is very important. I mean, so the advent of the coronary angiogram, the presence of stenosis is still, you know, casting a very long shadow. And many of the non-invasive tests that we use to detect ischemia are actually looking for the particular type of ischemia that is generated by stenosis. So no surprise that still people do not consider that you may have ischemia of non-obstructive coronary arteries, even if you have stenosis that are non-flow limiting. I think that for that reason, the reason why it's very important um, is that a huge amount of patients that uh, are uh, studied for um, chronic coronary syndromes or that come to the cath lab for a diagnostic study actually suffer this. And we perform a study that is the 8th annual study, was published uh, earlier this year in intervention, and in a non-selected population of, of patients, uh, including in, in four centers, the coronary angiogram revealed uh, obstructive lesions, conclusive uh, presence of obstructive lesions in 34-35% of patients. But the presence of patients who have uh, abnormalities demonstrated with INOCA testing were in more than 44% of patients. So it's, as the guidelines depict it, it's like an iceberg where actually ischemia is generated much more frequently by non-obstructive causes than by obstructive causes. It's a huge imp uh, problem that has implications for the quality of life of these patients. Yes, absolutely. And I sometimes feel the more we go looking for it, the more we see. And also patients present and, and we are aware the patients themselves, because their symptoms have not been listened to, they form huge network, they talk to themselves and um, patients read up on it quite a bit. Um, so how, I mean, is it, you know, we, we do the, the, the invasive assessment. Is it hard for a day-to-day -day clinician who's so busy, they've got so many cases to do and they've got an Inoka patient? Uh, what would be your uh, suggestion to get the invasive assessment done in a more efficient and an effective way? Now the, absolutely. The, the invasive assessment, any cath lab can have an um, implementation of Inoka testing in one day, virtually. You all, all the things you need is to have the possibility of making um, 12 lead EKG while you're doing the testing, to have a, a pressure, um, a, a guide wire fitted with sensors and a console to read the results, and then to use two drugs that are adenosine and acetylcholine testing. Uh, with this, in the eight angio study, performing this type of testing, comprehensive testing that will inform you if there are vasomotor disorders or if you have structural changes in the microcirculation took 15 minutes more than a conventional angiogram. So, you know, in the very busy cat lab activity that we have every day, the best thing that probably we can do in any patient in whom we fail to find a cause of ischemia by finding tight stenosis in the coronary arteries is to proceed ad hoc in interrogating the coronary arteries and typically we do this only in the left anterior descending coronary artery and finding if the patient has a, a non-obstructive cause of myocardial ischemia and the symptoms. 
Yeah. So the bottom line is it's not that hard and it's worth it's so much worth it doing that one test in the cath lab so we're able to provide the patients with the appropriate diagnosis. So I really encourage all of you who are looking after patients with ANOCA and ENOCA to consider following the diagnostic algorithm to find the right diagnosis for your patients so that we can provide the appropriate therapy. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you Professor Eskened. Thank you, be a pleasure.